you've just it's summarily fired the founder of the theater. But they seem to have come through it. Well, because there's no way to go through. Well, I don't know if they come through it. I know many, many people who the will never put foot in that has theater. Not seem to have worked. Well, it hasn't shifted the board, right? If that was the no. aim of the boycott, is to shift the board into either yeah. you know arbitration or meeting or you know some sort of compromise. Well, it's interesting. We'll see what happens with the grant. They haven't started your season. Uh, they haven't. They have. They, they started in January, so already it's truncated, and the grants are based on your size of your audience and all that stuff over a period. So there, there's going to be some kind of, unless they just make an exception for them, there's going to be a reckoning. Financials, which just means they're going to damage the theater even farther than, you know, than they have already. So it, it's not over yet. I mean, it's over for Ken, it's over for me, it's over for people who are just not going to work there. I know many people will never step foot in that building again because of that, you know. So where do we go in the future to stop this kind of, well, that all from our point of view, a destructive power grab? Uh -huh. Do we go back to the councils? Do we say, look, you know, in future you can't be sitting on the fence in this kind yes, of thing? Yes, that's one of the things that's been done. It really does. And how do we do that? Well, I think they just need to know here from the here from the communities again. And I know that the Toronto Arts Council is, is uh, what's her name there, Jeannie Stolk, or it's someone else who is there. But uh, they're looking at that. They're looking at the whole uh, the board thing. But at the relationship between the artistic management and the board and, and the community and, and the, the community, large. how those three players move, yeah. and when there's irreconcilable differences, do the councils just sit on their hands or do they actually stand up for either the board or the artists or the arts? And they certainly should get involved and find out what's actually going on and not be in those steps. Like they said, so immediately that this happened, the board got on the plane and went to Ottawa and, and talked to the Canada Council and, and, and tried to lock it up. So they heard from them first and I knew they weren't hearing Did they? Me. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, they went, they were right in there, right in there. They were, I mean, they were smart in some ways. They're very, uh, uh, they're very stupid in other ways and very kind of naive in other ways, but they were smart about that. They got in there. So it's the same thing. They'd heard from them first. Okay, so let me put the absolute cynical point of view, that the reaction to that firing of Ken and to the board taking power is from the, the old crazies from the 70s mm -hmm. who really thought that theater could be made out of the corners and thrown together and jump off shit. a cliff, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Whereas here we are in 2012 and really theater has to be more business-like, it has to be more you know, corporately uh, responsible and really that's what the fight was about. The crazy people with the dreams in the 70s and that was great, we loved you, but really it's a new world now. That's the cynical view of what Well, let's look at it closely, because if you look at, when you look at it closely, you realize that Ken is the only fundraiser that theater ever had. He was the one that actually balanced the books. He was the one that was responsible for all those things that made the theater healthy again. He was the one who came up with the idea to buy that building and arrange for it to be bought. And now it, it bought it for a million, too, and it's worth 11 or $12 million now. He was the one who sussed out every grant, every future, every project, and finds a factory's place in it. He's done all that. He's the responsible one. He's not that guy. He is, the, he is that guy of some part of him, you know, the artist, the hippie, all that stuff. He, did that. he has a very sound business mind. And he was the most highly functioning of all those people doing that. So a close examination of those things would have revealed that, that he had this in, he had this in hand. He knew what he was doing. And he had talked to people outside of the board who, who also have a, a history of, you know, of development and raising who were right behind him. They could have examined that, even if they just wanted to look at that on that level. The truth of it is it goes beyond that. It goes into petty, petty personal ambitions and, and they just wanted to be powerful. Now, there might be something else. They might have something in their mind about the building and maybe saying down the line, because here's what else happened. Because they couldn't be budged and ousted, they now have that building. And because we didn't know, someone should have known, it's worth, million dollars. It's worth 12 million bucks, and it's only got a 500,000 board or something. So it should have been separated, someone pointed out to us along the way, it should have been separated from the theater. It should have had its own board, and its own, it should actually be a separate entity, so they, they couldn't do that. And the board that owns the theater, the actual building, could have protected, but that doesn't happen, so they do because have that. Because that's the scenario for me. Any nonprofit theater that actually has real estate is in a very vulnerable position. Totally. If a board comes along, whether it's Tarragon or Factory, the board comes along and says, wait a minute, you know, the operating, you know, it's a $2 million operating, I'm sitting on a $12 million bit of real estate. If I'm smart board, we'll close the place, sell it, take our $12 million and we'll start a theater in the, you know, in the ground floor of the new condo. Absolutely. And, and it puts all those nonprofits in that totally vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. And unless, as you say, on the council level, there is some sort of guidelines of what happens if a board goes errant like that. 
Well, know? there's that level, and now maybe if the word gets out that what the theaters need to do is start a separate entity for the building, for the property, right? For the hard property, so that no matter the board just can't touch it. You know, it would be that board of the building to decide if they wanted to play along with them. But right now, that factory board has access to a twelve million dollars, so they can actually run. They could just keep remortgaging when they, if the councils pull the grants back. They can just oh my God. keep remortgaging the building and just live off it for a while. So, uh, our, so they have a lot of space. And two or three of the people on that board are real estate people. You know, so uh, I don't know. I mean, that was always at the back of people's minds, like what's really going on that level. But I think it, I have no proof of any of that stuff that there was deals. That, <coughs> although I, I wouldn't put it past them, but I do think it was really about power. They just want to play. I mean. They, you know, they come to the opening nights, but there really wasn't enough. There are a couple of people on that board who fancy themselves as artists and... And, and Sean Kerwin, who was, is on the board, was kept out yeah, she of was not the consultant. strategic she, she, Yeah, well, that's decisions. the other thing, right? She was just excluded from any of, that, right. any of those decisions about him. So that's pretty seedy. You know, uh, the whole thing is just smells. It was just awful. And it's an awful way for him to end his relationship with that theater. It's just, like, awful. It stinks. I mean, when a lot of people were thinking of how to kind of mem uh, commemorate his involvement, we're probably thinking of a statue or something to go and, you know, they fire him. You know, and, and I, maybe I didn't know too much, but I know how he was, you know, summoned, you know, summoned into that lawyer's office. You know, just, I had had a meeting with him on that day, right? We were talking about my play, we were going to do it, we were talking about lots of stuff. The meeting he, on the day he got the firing? Just before he got, the, on that same day, in the meeting, we met for lunch and uh, uh, we were talking about it because he was pretty dispirited because he knew there was this conflict and he had showed me a couple of weeks before that the drawing, the rendering for the new thing. It was really exciting, actually. I thought it was great because I believe, like he does, forward, somehow. Push your obstacles away and go forward. You don't, it's, it's like a shark or something. You know, you don't, you don't, you know. So what do we do now? Well, he's, what do artists do now? I shouldn't say we. What do artists do about this kind of situation? Well, I think that, you know, uh, uh, the councils are a big player in this, right? And they can't, you're right, they can't just sit back and let this stuff happen. They have to, I'm not, I'm not telling you how they have to come down on these issues, but they have to get involved. I heard over and over again, arm blank, arm blank, arm blank, like, but it's not applicable. And it's not true. You don't just do that. You do call people in on the carpet if you think that something's going wrong. You could have investigated this. I pulled my play the day after or hours after. If every other playwright had pulled their plays right away, it would have ended, I think. And that's part of another problem I had. They, as the players played, they had their own reasons. I'm not here to say, right, right. you know, they, they had fans, they were involved, and actors had been hired, they would do this. But had we all done it at the same time, I think it could have ended. But I was, I pulled my play, and even though it, she was surprised that I was pulling my play for some reason, it was still, well, the Lung Association with Ken, it makes sense that he would. No big surprise, emotional. I guess. Yeah, yeah emotional rather than reason. Yeah. So but, really, what, what it's, it's telling us that there is a crucial piece of arts policy that is missing. Mm. That's, so what we have to do, I think, is go back to the councils and say, we think this bit of policy is missing, and that made that happen. Exactly. And so we've got to fill in that piece of policy. And it's an investigation. It's actually saying, stop everything in its tracks until we look into what exactly has gone on and what it is really. There's a lot of stuff flying back and forth. They started as anyone do a thing that he wasn't doing his job. Garbage stuff, you know, just to protect himself. So they had to get in there. They're putting the thousands and thousands of dollars into this theater, taxpayers' money, okay. So let's find out what's happening here. You don't just hand it over to the board because we don't have anything in the bylaws that says we, they can be stopped. Right. Yeah, and you're the only ones who can stop them. You, say, well, you know, he said, well, the checks have already been issued for this year. I said, well, there's next year. You can call them on the carpet now and let them know. Right. Oh, we have, we have. But you have to have a mechanism to say, stop it now.